given to you in the exam if you need it. Okay, so you should be able to do 1, 3 and 4. Number 2 is a little difficult. You can try it at home, okay? Is number 3 okay? Number 4 is not too bad. Uh, number 4, I think it was uh, copper, was it? In number 4? And how long? It's quite long. It's 2 kilometers. And the thickness? 4 4 millimeters. Can you calculate the resistance here? Yes. Yeah, this is straight 4. Now, the only thing is in question number 2, uh, sorry, in part B of question number 4, can you look up please? Can you look up? In the second part of this question, this is part A, in part B, the telephone company, um, it braids the wires together. You know what braid is. The hair. Oh, you know what braid is, yeah. Um, you know, would you like to show us, please? <laughs> braid is when you take your hair and you like cross it over. Funny. Yeah. Uh, he, he knows. Angelina's hair all the time. Angelina's hair. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you know what braid is? Oh, you do. Yeah. You take your hair and then you yeah. wrap it over. Yeah. I do. Yeah. Yeah. When you make your hair like this yeah. and then this yeah. and then this yeah. making a pony. Like a live, all of it you You know I can hear Oh it means the tree and Yes, the yes, oh, yes, yeah. yes, 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 you got it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so in part B, the telephone company braids two wires together. So the wires, um, they go around each other, two of them. Okay. So when you look at it, what shape will you see? Well, you'll see two circles. And they're wrapped around each other. So the only difference in part B is that the area will be two. Yeah, but then everything else is the same. So that's the only difference. So that's not really any different, is it? So if you can finish these for homework, um, I think you sh except for number two, they should be okay. One, three, and four. But okay. did, did they give us the V? The V? They just calculate I, I think. Did they say calculate I? I think if I said calculate I, then I must have gave you the V. Wait, uh, go back to the I closed it now. Um, uh, there it is. With two wires raised together, yeah. the current is running through it. Yeah. No, I don't think I asked for the current. I just asked for the resistance, yeah. Okay, let's we'll start the next lesson here. Simple circuits. Continue, you have this yet? Yep. Yeah. Right, so an electric circuit is a path in which the electrons from a voltage or current source flow. Electric current flows in a closed path called an electric circuit. The point where those electrons enter is called the source, and the point where they exit is called the return or the earth ground. The exit point is called the return because the electrons always end up at the source where they complete the path of an electric circuit. There's a lot there, and you don't need that for the exam. It's like the formal definition for the circuit. It's much easier if I show you with a picture. So, forget about the words, let's look at the picture. This is called a circuit. There are two 
things you need for a circuit. You need a voltage source or a current source. So this is where the current comes from. And it needs to be closed. Not open. It needs to be closed. Okay. Um, the electrons, do they come from the positive or the negative? negative they come from the negative. Yeah. So this is called the source. And then where do the electrons go at the end? Back in here. This is called the return. Because it's where they return. Okay. So this is a circuit. Here is the current provider. Here is the source of the electrons. And here is the return of the electrons. Yeah. Um, this part of the circuit is called the load. Basically, it's what is taking the output. output. Yeah. So this is called the load, and this is the control. It's the switch on off. So you have source, load, control, and then in the source there are two parts: the source. Um, and the uh, return. Yeah. Yeah. So what I want you to draw is this. You don't need this. And on your picture, make sure you call this the source. This is called the load. And this is called the control. Source, load, control. Yes, that's called the load. L O A D. For my computer, the load is like the screen. Um, for the projector, what's the load? The load is the light. The light. The light. The light. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, did you draw the picture? Yes. Yeah? You drew the picture? Yes. Okay. Next. So, of course, we can't always draw beautiful pictures, right? That takes too long. So, we need diagrams to help the drawing. So, uh, for the picture, or for the picture we, you just drew, you don't want to do this every time. This will waste your life if you have to draw it every time. There's the bulb. And then and there, there's the switch. Yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? Um, we have these symbols. So, for example, you could have drawn it like this. This symbol represents the, uh, the source. Yes. This represents the light bulb. And then this represents the switch. So, this is the key for the symbols. This one is a switch. This one's called a cell, this one's called a battery, this one is a light, this one is a voltmeter, this one is an ammeter, this is a resistor, and this is a variable resistor. This means we can change the resistance by just turning something on it. You can make it bigger or smaller. Yeah. Um, please copy this 
into your notes. You need to know all these symbols. You drew them yet? Yeah. You've seen these before? Some of them have. I haven't seen that tree because it's the same. I mean, the 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 source and the battery of the cell. Not the positive to negative terminal. Yeah. It's it's the one the there is like like the bigger one is positive and the smaller one is negative. <laughs> yeah. The switch, volt amp resistor. Yeah. Continue. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. We have the um, equation then, like the square two, we put it inside the bracket or outside the bracket? For which one? Let's say for like A or the so. A, it's probably outside the bracket in pi r squared. How can we say like it? But it depends what the formula is. I can't tell you, there's just no... Just write pi times r squared. I'm not really sure what you're asking me. Uh, you see the point. But I don't know, the square could be inside or it could be outside. It depends on the equation. It's more likely going to be on the outside of the bracket, though, because the reason you have a bracket is so that something can be squared. Mm. Yeah. Okay, continue. So, um, this is the example that we drew. Now, uh, Adnan! Oh no, those are you. Okay. Series and parallel. So, when you have two loads or two resistors back to back, we say they're in series. When uh, they're um, on two separate paths, we call them in parallel. So, here I would say the lights are in series, and here I say the lights are in parallel. Okay, so you can draw this to help remind you. This is called series, and then like this is called parallel. Just draw this one. Yeah. You drew this? Okay, continue. Yeah. Okay. Right. English time. Mm -hmm. 
So, uh, one battery is not called one battery, okay? There, if you go back to my picture here, this is called a cell and this is called um, a battery. And there actually is a difference between the two and it's more to do with English than anything to do with physics. So, one battery is not called one battery. We call it a cell. So, it's like a single power source, just like one. You don't call it a battery, actually. You call it a cell. So, in the picture here, um, at the start, oops, uh, we call this, um, this was called a battery, but really it should be called a cell. The reason we call it a battery in English is complicated, but really it, we should call it a cell. So, in other words, I think, I recommend you think about it like this. When you have one, you call it a cell. Okay, so you never say one battery, you say one cell. When you have two or more cells, then you call it a battery. So, if you have two cells, you could call them a battery. So, you can say, I have a 3 volt cell. That means I have one. This is right. I have two connected 3 volt cells, therefore I have one battery. This is right. You have two of them together, this makes a battery. Two, no, it doesn't matter. I have three cells, therefore I have one battery. This is right. I have two batteries. This is wrong. Okay? You don't you never have two batteries. You have one cell, two cells, three cells. One battery. You have one battery. One battery is just many cells together. If you have three cells and three cells, how many cells do you have? Yeah. Six. That's still one battery. Okay? So you never say you should never be saying I have two batteries. You mean that the six uh, cells are one battery? It's one battery, yeah. So, if you have mo so, it's like cell is the singular and battery is the plural. It's kind of like this. Yeah. Um, okay, so please don't say this. I have three volt cell, therefore I have one battery. What do you think, right or wrong? Yeah, it's wrong. Because if you have only one uh, cell, it's only one cell. It's not a battery. A battery is two or more cells. Please don't say this. Okay. Now, I'm simplifying the English rules here, but it's good enough. Okay. So, one is a cell. Two cells or more is a battery. Okay. Right. Now, let's look at some basic rules for circuits. So, we have series and parallel. So the first one we'll do is series. So for example, you have um, something like this. Let's say. Uh, and then we have a... Whoops. Now, this... Oh yeah, sorry, I didn't say this. This side is the positive and this side is the negative. So the current, which way does the current go? No, positive to negative. Uh, the electrons go the other way. For electrons. No, no, like when it goes like this, it's turned. Yes. What are you asking me? Like, no, I'm saying when it goes from this way, from negative, it goes to positive, yes? Yeah? Yes. Yeah. that I mean. I don't really know what you're asking me. I'll tell you. A current flows from positive around to negative. The electrons go from negative to positive. That's all you need to know. Now, the first rule is that current is constant in series. So, for example, if I put an ammeter here, an ammeter here, or an ammeter here, it will all say the same current. So, the I is constant in series in a series okay so the first rule is current is constant i1 equals i2 okay that's the first rule can you write that down please
Well, my shoe broke. Ah, it just gets better and better. Six students here that the AAT fight for. Yeah, the AAT thing about the Mississippi. Oh, good. Well, that's when she was doing biology. Yeah. yeah. Before she sees off the light. He's saying your EAT presentation was about cholesterol. Really? <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to forget about this. <laughs> you remember you were in biology, yeah? Remember that? <laughs> yeah. That was the bad time, yeah. yeah. Now you're in physics and everything is better. Okay, the next rule. Uh, resistance is additive. So what I mean here is, if this is R1 and this is R2, together they make one resistor of R1 plus R2. So resistance adds. Or total resistance is R1 plus R2. Is that okay? Yeah. Next rule. Voltage is different and additive. Let me explain with the picture again. So, here is a resistor. Here is a resistor. Look, please. This voltage, I'll call it V. And I put a voltmeter here, I'll call it V1. Mm. And this one here is, we'll call it V2. These will be different, but if the resistors are different. But the total will be the total around both of them. Yeah. So the V from here to here will be equal to the V1 plus the V2. So for example, if this is 4 volts and this is 6 volts, then in total this one would read 10 volts. So voltage is additive and usually different. V1 is not equal to V2 and they add together. Okay. Next. The battery. So. Uh, can we go through battery now? So battery means I have more than two cells. So for example, it could be something like this. Plus and a minus, and then another plus and a minus. Let's say this is six volts, and let's say this is two volts, okay? If you match the minus side with the plus side when you connect them, then what happens is the voltage adds, so it increases. So this will have a total of 8 volts. But if you put it one in backwards, like this, it would be 6 minus 2. So if you have one like this, but then one like this, if this is a 6 and this is a 2, the total will be 4. So a plus with a minus makes it bigger. But uh, a plus with a plus or a minus with a minus makes it smaller. Okay. Next now, of course, is parallel. Can I continue? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Next, parallel. So, uh, you have one current this way, we call it I1. And then one current here, we'll call it I2, and maybe they come together. 
and we'll call this one I. These will be different, but they add together. So the I will be I1 plus I2. So current is different and additive. I1 and I2 are different and they add together. Okay. Next one is voltage. Equal. Very good. They're equal. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. Next one is resistance. Um, but you're right for voltage. So for resistance, this is an interesting one. You might have seen it before. If this is R1, and this is R2, um, and you want to consider it the same as one resistor added together. It's not like the last one. You don't just add them together simply. Like if this is 2 ohms and this is 3 ohms. It's not 5 ohms. Yeah. If this is R, you can find it from this formula. 1 over R equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. So we say here that the reciprocal is additive. This is called the reciprocal. Reciprocal is the name of this. 1 over X. The reciprocal is additive. Continue? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. As you said for one, voltage is constant. So for example, um, let's say um, this splits here and we have a resistor and then this splits here and we have a resistor. And if I put a voltmeter here, it will say V1. And if I put a voltmeter here, it will say V2. That's, no, hang on, I'm getting confused. Is this what I mean? V1 yeah, yeah, and this is V1 equals V2. But also, V1. if I put a big, uh, sorry, if I put the voltmeter around the whole thing, also. it will say V, and it will also be the same. So the voltage here and here and here is the same. Well, sorry, I'm not clear. Uh, let me draw that again a little clearer. So if this says V volts, then this one here, it will also say V volts. And if I put a voltmeter around the whole thing, it will also say V, like this. So uh, the voltage is constant. Yeah. Lastly is the battery. So, for example, you could have it something like this. You know, in parallel. Uh, and this is something we'll study later, okay? Because this one is only simple circuits. This is actually a little difficult. So, that's, we'll do that in a later lesson. Okay. Uh, these are the basic rules. So, now we'll do one example, uh, and that's it then, okay? So... We'll try and draw this here. Um, it's this here. This is one ohm, two ohms, three ohms, four ohms, and this cell is five volts. Draw this, and my question is, what is the current here, 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 and here? I want to uh, find all the currents. So draw this, and then I'll do it. Yeah, just draw. Draw this circuit.
Yeah? Can I do it now? Okay. Can yes? Wrong. I can do it. You ready to see? So, um, the one on the top was one, wasn't it? And then down the side here, this one's two. This one is three. This one is four. And then uh, in the middle here, which way? This one here is five volts. Yeah? Okay. Ah, man, what are you writing? Did you draw this? Yeah, I'm trying to see. No, 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 no. Watch me do it now, because it's a little bit difficult. Just remember, first thing, is that all of these are just wires. So I can move them if I want to. For example, look, look. If I just take this and move it, does anything change here? No. 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 So what I'm going to do first is just move the wires to make it a little bit easier to see. No, no, just move the wires. So watch. I don't like this down the middle. This is a bit messy. So what you can imagine is I lift the battery up and just take it outside. So it will look like this. Um, which way was the plus? Oh, it was on the other side. Can you see what I did? I just, just yeah. pulled it out like that. Is that okay? From just from inside to the outside, that's all. Wait, wait, uh, wait the other way. That doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Yeah. If you move it over the other side. So you said, where is the plus sign? Does that make a difference? Oh yeah, and I'm trying to visualize, if I move the battery out, the minus will still be up here and the plus will still be down here. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't turned, <coughs> twisted it, you know. Now, um, let me just move this around a bit more so what I'll do is I'll just stick the battery here and then uh, this one goes along and splits into two so I'll just straighten it up a little bit there'll be a one here and then there'll be a four here and then uh, they have to come back together as a two here and the three here and then they join back together and then here it goes back into the plus. What does it make a difference if you yeah. have between one and two and two and three? You mean if you swap these numbers? Yeah. No. What do you mean? Yeah. Uh, if this was connected yeah. like here? Between one and two and three. Oh yeah, that's quite different because then it'll be have it'll have a two, three, four together. So how do we know that it's connected between two and three? What do you mean, how do we know it's connected between two and three? Because in the picture it's connected between two and three. Don't give me a heart attack, please. Yeah. I didn't, all I did was, I just lift this up and move it out here. So they're still connected here and here. Okay, all right, okay. Right. Is this picture okay? Yes. Now you can clearly see one and two is parallel to three and four. Yeah, so let's now use our rules. Okay, zoom in. How big is the battery? Five volts. So, um, what we can do is we can add these together. One and two, the total is three. So what I'll do actually, oops, um, can I just put it in red as like a big one and this is 3 and then this one here seven. is 7 then now if this is 5 volts because it's in parallel here to here is going to be 5 volts and then here to this one 5 volts yes now we know the V we know the R so if I use my triangle, what's the I? V over R. over R. Yeah, which in this case is 5 over 3, which is 1.67 amps. So the current up the top here is 1.67. Likewise, for this one, we can say the current is, uh, what is it, 5 over 7. What's that, please? Um, actually, I have it here. 
Zero point seven one. Zero point seven one four amps. So the current down here is zero point seven one four amps. Now these are in parallel, so what happens to the current here? They add together. So if I add my answers together, I'll get two point three eight amps. So what I need to do is um go back to my uh, picture here. Let me just put it back the way it was. Oh, I'll just redraw it. Yeah, what the heck? I want to go back to pen. Right, let me just draw it roughly like this with the line down the middle. So this 1.67 was the current going into the 1 and uh, the 2. So that means uh, like here, this was 1.67. Now this 0 0.714, that was going into the 4 and the 3. So that's this one going down here. That one was uh, 0.714 amps. Now where is the 2.38? That is when the two of them combine together. So in my picture, they combine together going back this way. Now actually, I realize I drew my arrows the wrong way. Sorry. This is left. This is up. This is up. This is right. Yeah. So they combine. Yeah, they combine up here. Yeah. So this one here, along this one. Yeah, yeah. That one is. 2.38 amps. The, the question is a little difficult. I know it is, but it's to do with your visual um, understanding, to be able to move things around, be able to understand what's in series, what's in parallel, and to uh, just basically spot that. So I think this question is too difficult if you leave it like this. But if you move it into this picture, it's easier to do. Yeah. Now, um, did you write this down? Yeah. Let's have a look at the homework diagrams. So, the homework is a, a little bit easier. Here, this is two resistors connected in series. That's all. This one here is a two and three connected in parallel. So you have like a two and a three in parallel. Uh, this one here is about two wires which are braided. Uh, this one here, two resistors again. And this one here, I give you a diagram. So for example, here, what you could do, for example, is you could add these together. Yeah, and make it as easy. Yeah, make it. And then take this one and add it with this yeah. one. And then just make it one resistor. And here you have two cells. Each cell is six. If this is a six and this is a six, together it makes one with twelve. So you have a single cell here of twelve and then a single resistor. And now that's easy. You know, it's just one and one. Yeah? And I don't think this is too bad. I think these are good exam questions. In fact, I think for your exam, the electricity question, especially the circuits, with practice you'll find them quite easy. Yeah? I mean there's only there's only basic formulas. Like here, the voltage here, the same or different as this one. These two are parallel so they're the same. But is the voltage here the same as this one? No. No, these are different. But the voltage here plus the voltage here should make 12. You see? So with a little bit of thinking you can work it out from the picture. It's a nice qu I like these. They're nice. They're good thinking questions, you know? Uh, right, so this is your homework then for this one. You probably are nearly finished the first homework anyways. You should have one left to do. Yeah. All right.